Welcome, Nancy Holder, to Slayer Lit. It's a pleasure to finally get to speak with you in person at last. Thank you so much. I fully concur with that idea. And welcome to Chicago. Thank you. Do you get here often? No. Um, I came to World Fantasy here mm -hmm. many years ago. Got to take the boat ride. That was awesome. Got to see gangland photos oh. of crime scenes. And um, my... What I yelled when I saw these crime scenes, because they didn't look real to me, mm -hmm. was there was one in a lobby with a man, a woman, and a dog that had been shot in oh. a gangling shooting. And I screamed out, oh, my God, they shot the dog. <laughs> so for a while, there were panels at conventions called, oh, my God, they shot the dog. Uh, in, my, in my honor. <laughs> well, it is pretty horrible of them to shoot the dog. I mean, right, uh, there's really no call for that. That is really the, the uh, true sign of a real criminal. <laughs> Well, we're sitting here enjoying this uh, conversation in someone's soon-to-be wedding reception, as far as I can tell. So I wish only the very so? best for the happy couple. Yeah, I do, too. Absolutely. <laughs> um, they have a prenup. <laughs> <laughs> or prenup. We might want to leave one here for them. We could write something out and just go. leave it on the table. Um, let's start with the secret origin of Nancy Holder. Uh, <laughs> you, you had um, an interesting childhood. Born in San Diego, but raised in Japan. I take it there's some naval background, yes, maybe? Yes, oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And at the age of 16, you went to Germany to be a ballerina. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So, so far, this is sounding almost like a, a princess fairy tale story, traveling the world and... <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there's some... But what did you want to ask me? Well, I guess I want to ask you, how do you go from being a ballerina to being an actual professional author? Not someone who dabbles in it, but this is your livelihood. That's a very perceptive question, because there's a good answer. Um, when I was taking ballet uh, around 18, I had been accepted to college to Ravel at UC San Diego, which is the most rigorous of the colleges. So thank God I deferred enrollment. I went back to Germany. I had dropped out of high school, went to Germany to dance, finally finished high school, went back to Germany and got really worried about what am I gonna do with this life? I mean, most dancers really stop dancing around 35. I thought, what am I gonna do after that? and I got really badly injured. And I couldn't even lift up my leg to get on the streetcar, because that's what we had in Germany, and um, to go home. Mm. I thought, this is nuts. I had to walk home five miles because I couldn't lift my knee up, because it was the injury was such. And I thought, this is crazy. And so I stopped going, being a dancer, and sort of tried to stop being a dancer, but decided I'm not going to be a professional. And then I thought, no more wacky careers. I'm going to have a real career that you could go to school and you get some degree in it, and, and it's going to be a great, easy road. And I tried different things. I tried being a speech therapy major. I was an MBA for a while, and none of it stuck. And finally, I thought, well, I really, you know, I was applying to grad schools, and one of my professors at UCSD wrote me a letter of recommendation and said, I think if Nancy wanted to be a professional writer, she could do it. And he had been very encouraging. I'd taken a lot of running classes with him. And every time he'd say something like this, I'd send out stuff and it would get rejected. And I never sold anything. I thought, this guy's crazy. So I tried to ignore that because I didn't want to have any more jobs like being a ballerina. I didn't want any weird thing. I wanted a normal life. But it just didn't work out. So I just kept writing and sending things out. And I finally sold something. And that was the end of that. You know, just to have never really had a normal career. Yeah. Did you get started writing fantasy, or were you trying other genres? And I was sort of... always a horror freak. Even when I was a little kid, I got a um, black wig for Halloween one year, and I wrote two movies. One was called The Monster in the Furnace, and one was called The Monster in the Swimming Pool, because my actor could wear my black wig to be the monster. <laughs> and I had a Remco magic kit, and the only trick I, pl I used was you could saw the lady in half. It's, it's magnets. So... It's always been with me, and I read those creepy, scary comic books, and when I was little, they were so scary, I would turn the covers over when I went to bed so that things wouldn't, I wouldn't see them by accident. And a string puppet from Tijuana, because everybody, back then, you go to Tijuana and get all this weird stuff. One of them was a string puppet, and I decided I better cut all the strings so he couldn't get me at night. So it's just <laughs> weird, but I've always been a fantasy, dark fantasy horror person. So you faced your fears by creating them, by writing stories and scaring yes. other people. Yes. And so many of your works, fantasy works very often tend to, to soft pedal a lot of the horror aspects. 
yours can have a real hard edge of horror without being overboard, without without being overwhelming. But there's always a strain of it right under the surface, and and you always kind of wonder if at what point does it cross the line, and then you're in serious trouble as a character. Mm-hmm. But it, it's it's always an omnipresent threat, which is a nice touch in your books. There's a, a gravity to them. Thank you very much. Um, You've been established for quite a while. You won a couple of Brand Stoker Awards. You, you've been done doing uh, novels for 15 years or so. And how did you get into the Buffy books? Because you were, other than uh, Richie Cusick, who did the adaptation right. of the movie and then the first episode mm-hmm. of the show, you and Chris Golden were the first authors to do an original Buffy novel. That is true. Um, the way it got started, I had written some young adult romance novels. as the first two sales I ever had were mm-hmm. young adult. And I had written horror, and a writer named Scott Sienson, God bless him, um, asked me if I might be interested in writing books based on a show that was going to be on TV at 8 o'clock at night or 9 o'clock at night on Mondays. I knew immediately what it was because I was waiting for Buffy. And he introduced me to somebody at Random House who had been at Zebra, who was a horror editor, so I knew her from HWA. Mm -hmm. So he set, he put us together, and she said, I'm bidding on the rights, and if I get them, I'll hire you. I'm like, yes. So I had actually gone to Dark Delicacies, and I secretly bought the soundtrack to the movie for good luck. I didn't tell anybody. I was so nervous. I was so excited. And she didn't get the rights. And so I called Chris, and I said, do you want to work on something together? Well, before she didn't get the rights, I asked him if he wanted to work together. We found out she didn't get the rights. Within 24 hours, we figured out who did have the rights, who was Lisa Clancy at Simon & Schuster, and we faxed her some ideas. We actually faxed. And within 24 hours, we had the go to write the first book. Then we got scripts. We had like six or seven scripts sent to us. So we read them all, and we picked the Joss written scripts to create a Buffy language because we knew there was some kind of weird teen speak they were speaking. We called it Buffy Ease. Of course, now everybody calls it Slayer speak. But um, we had three and a half weeks to write the book. I had a baby daughter, and the day that we said yes, she quit. My babysitter quit. So I had this infant and three and a half weeks, and I said, we can't do it. And Chris said, oh, no, you always need to say yes and then figure out how to do it. (laughs) <laughs> so I went ahead and we did it and we turned it in on time and we found out people were taking bets on it about whether or not we'd get it in on the <laughs> deadline, but we did. So it was from the scripts, straight scripts, um, and then just trying to figure out what Joss was interested in. So we, we really focused on the scripts written by Joss and they were amazing. It was so much fun to read them. I'm like, wow, this guy's a great writer. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've always really admired about him the most is he's a really great writer. And since we always see broadcast...